Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I know it's been probably a long day for a lot of people, so I'll try not to make this into a snore fest. Um, where's my first slide? Oh, that's very nice. It's all about the customer. Um, <clears throat> I like to touch people. Um, in fact, I've made a career out of touching people. Everybody in this room is in the business of touching people. Of course, I'm talking about multi-channel touch points. We're very clever at all the digital touch points that we have now. We're very creative. You've heard lots of people speaking about them today. I'm sure you got lots of ideas out of them. But we have a tendency to get so concentrated on the top part that sometimes it's here at the delivery position and the loyalty that things get a little bit overlooked. And we have to get better at how we look upon every single touch point. And here's why. 6.9 billion was spent in Ireland by the Irish consumer last year. Now, don't get too excited. 60% uh, of that went straight out of the country. Um, and you know it's made up of everything from travel to mobile phones to every sort of expenditure you can think. But it really does show that the Irish consumer their appetite for using online as a purchase channel is growing. By 2020, it's estimated that the online consumer will be spending 12.9 billion euros. And we really have to get better at the touch points to really get a bigger chunk of this pie. Um, I know my most demanding customer. I know their name. I even know where they live. That customer is me. I often do test orders on arnets.ie, and that is only purely to understand exactly what the customer is experiencing. Um, three weeks ago, I bought a tie on the site, and I found the overall experience on site was pretty good, um, could find it easily got the order confirmation, and I chose to go for standard delivery, which was three to four working days. Uh, two days later, um, I heard the letterbox go, and the parcel falling on my carpet floor, went out to have a look, and I saw a brown paper A4 envelope. And I, all I assumed was my wife had bought more crap off eBay, so I went out, retrieved it, and suddenly so it was addressed to me. And I thought, surely this cannot be my tie. But it turned out it was. So although my first initial thought was, well, that's pretty good. We got there, we got the delivery there two days early. But overall, my feeling of my best, my impression was kind of waning. It was kind of like there was no air of care to it. If you go into town on a Saturday, on any given Saturday, you'll see people walking around city centre with Arnott's bags. They're very, very identifiable bags. We spend a lot of money on those bags. And really, it's purely from the point of view of we want the customer to feel like it's an occasion to shop at Arnott's. We want them walking out of the shop feeling, you know what, that was a really good experience and a really good decision of mine. So why are we treating the online customer differently to the in-store customer? It's simply not good enough. Anyway, I got my parcel, ripped it open, put my hand into the envelope, and instinctively knew that something wasn't right. I pulled out my tie, only to find that the tie was tied. Uh, somebody had put a beautiful example of a Windsor knot in it. Um, and I stood there kind of looking at it, kind of like I'd hold a dirty nappy, a little bit confused, when my wife walked past and uh, asked me, um, why did you buy a pink tie? Excuse me for a second. I said, I didn't buy it for me. I bought it as a test order. And she said, why is it tied? And I thought, that's exactly what I was thinking. Why is it tied? We have a free delivery service, order over 50 euros, free delivery. We have a free return service. We have a free click and collect service. 
but I don't remember a free tie or tie service. So obviously what had happened was whoever picked the order went onto the shop floor, whipped it off a mannequin, thought, fair enough, gave it to the guy who was packing the order, he shoved it into a brown paper envelope, and out the door it went. They get on with the next order. So not only were we letting down our customer, we were taking away the sense of occasion away from them. We were letting down our staff as well because they simply didn't know the standards that people expect of today. And if we don't reach those standards, you can be assured that our competitors are. So immediately, I have to go back to the drawing board and we will produce that same feeling of if you go in store, walk out with your distinctive Arnott's bag, we are going to transfer that onto the online experience. It's the willingness to go the last mile with them. I'm sure you've heard that phrase before today. But all that work that we've done before on building awareness, getting good content on the site, good functionality, that's all wasted at that point that that person is not impressed with how that order is received. More than likely, that customer is going to return that tie, and they're not going to shop with us again. So you have to go that last mile. <coughs> Excuse me. I was um, recently accused of promoting prostitution and human trafficking. Um, not me directly, but Arnest was. Uh, you may have seen it in the media. We had a t-shirt on the website that was from a brand that specialized in slogan t-shirts. Now, there's nothing good about this t-shirt. It was a horrible t-shirt. Um, and somebody saw it online and quite rightly decided to tweet their offense. Now, they tweeted their offense with the hashtag normalization of the sex trade. Now, we're a reliable family brand, and we don't necessarily want to be associated with such a hashtag. Twitter blew up, uh, and all the media channels in Ireland took it on, and suddenly it was everywhere online. We responded immediately. We took it off the site, we took it away from the shop floor, and we responded within 20 minutes online to say, hands up, we got this really, really wrong. We didn't mean to cause any offense. Um, is anyone thinking what was on the t-shirt now? Yeah, you're thinking, hold on. I'm going to show it to you, but I'm not trying to cause offense here. I'm just, for illustration only, that was the t-shirt. Um, as you can see, there's nothing good to say about that. So I'm going to get rid of that now. At the same time, I worked for a while with a company in the UK and they specialized in slogan t-shirts. They were a very irreverent brand. They knew how to pitch themselves. They were quite laddish. They had the same issue, in fact. Um, it was during the year of their Queen's Golden Jubilee. I can't remember when that was exactly. But the owner of the company decided that they would design a t-shirt to mark this occasion. And he got their designers to design a t-shirt with the Queen's head on a page three model. Anyway, um, Twitter blew up. And the media across the world got hold of it. It, was, it appeared in media in America, Spain, France, um, and it even made it onto the BBC website. But how did they react? They started reposting, retweeting all the negative uh, content that they had online. And they even built an email campaign and a social media campaign basically saying this way for the most controversial t-shirt in the UK. What happened? They sold 2,000 of those t-shirts in two days. So you can see two companies with basically the same problem reacting very, very differently, very, very quickly, but they knew their audience and they responded. Anyone, do you want to see that t-shirt? Yeah, go ahead. You can see why they sold 2,000 dollars. Um, but it just shows you the power of social media. People feel empowered now. They will call you out if they believe you're doing it wrong or badly. I mean, I do it myself. I use Twitter to call out customer service from especially hosting companies who 
you never seem to be able to contact. But you've got to respond and respond quickly and authentically to your brand and to your audience. It is a crucial touch point. The benchmark is respond within 20 minutes to social media. Customer email, respond within an hour. Um, excuse me. Social media too is a, well, we all know it, it's a fantastic customer service tool. Um, and it is something that we have to think innovatively about. And it's not somewhere where we can just keep throwing up. I see a lot of companies just throwing up content for content's sake. Really, you've got to find your voice and what you want to say on social media. And you've got to allow a conversation to take place. You've also got to think innovatively about what you do with every single touch point. Um, I know a lot, of, a lot of companies, we don't have big budgets, uh, endless, um, endless fees, but when we do come up against a problem, we do really have to think outside the box. Um, I'll give you an example. There was a company in the UK, uh, they were call, they're called uh, Great Little Trading Company. Great little brand, um, they sell um, kids storage units for bedrooms and, and playrooms. They found that busier times that their dropout, uh, their, their call rate dropout on call waiting spiked at busier times. They didn't have an endless budget, they, didn't have, they couldn't afford new agents or new licenses. So they, in my opinion, came up with a genius plan. They simply changed the music uh, on their call waiting from some generic radio music to uh, 1970s and 80s kids TV team tunes. So Flintstones and the Pink Panther. The second they did that, not one person dropped out. And in fact, even when people did get through to customer service, some of them even commented saying, I actually want to go back on. I was enjoying it so much. So that, that's a good example of thinking outside the box and thinking innovatively. Um, and if, especially with the lack of budget for a lot of companies, it is a case of um, be willing to fail and fail fast. Don't be put off if it doesn't work the first time. Try something off kilter next time. You will crack it eventually. We do have to change how we feel about, or how we interact with our customers um, all the time. And I think this is the biggest reason why 12.9 billion spent in 2020, it's all there for the taking. Um, it's just really how we deal with all of our touch points and get all of our touch points right. Um, thank you.